Hey guys and welcome back. It's great to have you here. We're having such a great time sorting out your factoring polynomials for you. Thank you Subaru for introducing the show. We're really excited to be here for you. For now we're just going to jump into two more questions because we got some questions from um, to me. Sorry guys, need to check my notes sometimes. We got some great questions from Tumi, so let's see what she has to ask us. Hey Tenfold Life, my name is Dumi and I'm from Govu Combined School. Please help me with this question. Thank you. Okay. I really love this question, guys, because she's given us two different questions where we can apply the remainder and factor theorem and see how we can work out the different remainders if we divide polynomials by a binomial. So I'm going to jump right into it. It's really great because we've got two different questions, so I'm going to do two different types of division. First, I'm going to do long division. For those of you who prefer long division, that's cool. I personally don't. It's not my favorite, but I'm still going to go through it with you guys just so you make sure that you know what you're doing. And then the second one I'm going to go through with synthetic division because that's my favorite. I find it's a lot simpler. So yeah, it'll be great to just revise both of those methods. So let's do the first question. It says, determine the remainder if each of these equations are divided by the factor given. Okay, so our first equation is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x plus 8. And we need to see what the remainder is if we divide it by x plus 10. Okay, so I said firstly I'm going to do this one by long division. So to lay it out, we get our polynomial underneath a square bracket thingy. It kind of looks like a square root, but it's not. And then we put the whole factor that we're dividing by. Okay, so I don't know if you guys tuned in yesterday, but Julian covered the daddy, mommy, sister, brother method, which is basically divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. Okay, so we're going to apply that method to our long division. So firstly, we divide x cubed by x that we have over here. So we get x squared. That's divide. Then we multiply. So we say x squared multiplied by x gives us x cubed. Okay. Then we say x squared multiplied by 10 gives us plus 10x squared. Okay. So that's the multiply done. Now we subtract this whole thing from here. Okay, so x cubed minus x cubed gives us zero. Minus 5x squared minus 10x squared gives us negative 15x squared. Okay, so that's subtract. Now we bring this one down, so we get plus 2x. And then we start the process all over again. So negative 15x squared divided by x gives us negative 15x. We multiply that out, so we get negative 15x squared, and then multiplied by 10 gives us negative 150x. Now we subtract these two. Okay, so this is going to give us 0 here. Negative 2x, if we subtract this whole thing here, negative 2x plus 150x gives us 152x. Okay, now we keep going with our method, so we bring this term all the way down here and we get plus 8. Okay, so now we start again. We divide 152x by x and we get 152. Now we multiply that out so we get 152x multiplied by 10 from over here and that is 1520. Okay, so now remember we subtract that whole thing so these two are going to cancel out. 8 minus 1,520 is negative 1,518. Okay, when you start running out of things to bring down, guys, when you're doing long division, that final answer is your remainder. That number that you're left over that doesn't have any x values in it, that is your remainder. Okay, so the question was, find the remainder. We've worked it out. That is the remainder there. Okay, so that's the first question that I was going to do via long division. The second one I want to do via synthetic division because sometimes maybe you guys prefer that method. But what you need to take into account, guys, that factor there is the same as saying if x plus 4 equals 0, that is a factor. Okay, so when you do long division, you use that bracket as it is. But when you do synthetic division, guys, you need to divide by the exact value that that x equals. So if I manipulate this factor equation that I've put here, 
If I solve for x, that means that x equals negative 4 is the exact value factor, okay? So when you're doing synthetic division, here you do long division when you have the factor bracket. When you have the exact value, you use synthetic division. Okay, so to set it up, we put our factor on the side. We set up our little division bracket situation. And then we use the coefficients of the different x uh, terms in our polynomial. Okay, so coefficient of x cubed is 4. Coefficient of x squared is negative 12. Of x is negative 67. And the last coefficient is negative 30. Okay. So, the first thing we do is bring down that first coefficient. So that's just 4 over there. Then we multiply that 4 by our factor that we get. So we get negative 16. Now we add these two terms together, these two here. So negative 12 plus negative 16 gives us negative 28. Now we multiply these out. Okay, so 28 multiplied by 4. I'm going to be real lazy and use a calculator. So 28 multiplied by 4, the two negatives give us a positive and we get 112. Okay, so now we add these two together. Negative 67 plus 112, it's basically the same as saying 112 minus 67, so we get 45 over here. Now we multiply that out and that should give us negative 180. 45 by 2 is 90, by another 2, yeah, negative 180. Okay, so now we add these two together and we get negative 210. Okay, so guys, when you're doing synthetic division, remember that these numbers here are coefficients of the next factor. So we'd have 4x squared minus 28x plus 45 is the factor if we multiply by x plus 4. And then this here is the remainder. Okay, so that number that you left with at the end there is the remainder that you're looking for. Okay, so hopefully that has helped you with your factor and remainder theorem, guys. I don't know if you remember in the theory that Sibusisu covered earlier, let me try and find it for you actually, because it gave a nice explanation. Okay, so here it said, if a polynomial is divided by a factor, the remainder will be the function of that that factor that we have from the bracket here. You see, if we have these coefficients there, the remainder will be the function of that factor. So if we go back there, here we've got this factor here. Remember it said, if it's divided by ax plus b, means that in this circumstance, a equals one and b equals four. But obviously the signs are gonna change when we manip manipulate this equation. So it said that the remainder would be the function of b over a, okay? So that means it would be f of negative four over one because the signs change when you manipulate this. So if I quickly plug, this would simplify to negative four up here, guys. Okay, so if I take f of negative four, let me go and stick that into my polynomial quickly. What was my polynomial? Okay. If I go and put negative 4 into that polynomial, I get 4 multiplied by negative 4 cubed, minus 12 multiplied by negative 4 squared, minus 67 multiplied by negative 4, minus 30. And I get negative 210. You see how those values are the same, guys? The function of that b over a is equal to the remainder of that factor. That's where the whole thing comes from. That b over a comes from the factor bracket here that we we're talking about. So hopefully guys this has helped you understand a little bit of your theory. Uh, I tried to incorporate two different types of division because I favor the one but sometimes you prefer the other one. But yeah, anyway, I hope that question has helped you guys. For now we're going to jump into another question with Sia Bonga. He's going to take the next question so stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the show guys. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, that's a very exciting question that Phil just did there. Thank you so much, Phil. And I hope you guys are still enjoying there at home. So right about now, let's have a, let's have a look at a question that was sent through to us by Nomzamu. Hello Tenfold, my name is Nomzamu Masugu from Blue Hills College. Can you please help me with this question?
Thank you. Thank you, Nomzamo, for that wonderful question. Let's just have a look at it. Now, the question reads, use the factor and remainder theorem to find the value of p in the equation below. When f of x is equal to px squared plus 25 plus 4 is divided by x minus 2 and the remainder is 78. So I will just underline the important things there. Factor and remainder theorem is what we want. We need to find the value of p and also we are given f of x as that. This is my factor and that is the remainder. So there are a few things that you guys need to know about this. When you're talking of factor and remainder theorem, there's multiple ways that you can solve a question. And I'm going to show you guys two ways and on how to solve this particular question. So let's just have a look at the first, question, uh, the first method. The first method is what you guys are all familiar with, which is x minus 2, uh, px squared plus 25x plus 4. So this is the long division method that you guys are familiar with. And then what you do with this is you take the first term, you divide it by the first term of the factor. What you get there, you multiply it by the factor and then you subtract. So I believe you guys are familiar with that. px squared divided by x will give me my px. And then I multiply this by that factor, which will give me px squared minus 2px. And then we said we subtract. So subtracting here, I'll have px squared minus px squared, which will give me a zero. I don't have to indicate the zero. Remember, one and zero in math, we hardly indicate them. 25x minus minus 2px, so that will give me 25 plus 2p. All of it is x. Remember, these are two like terms. That's, what I'm, that's why I'm indicating them in brackets. And then I'm indicating the x outside. Uh, plus a 4 if I bring down my x there, uh, my, the value of 4 rather. So I will then take the first term again, divided by that first term there, which will then give me, let's just go up a bit, will give me plus 25 plus 2p. If I multiply this by the factor again, it will give me 25 plus 2p, all of it multiplied by x, and then also negative 2 into... Uh, 25 plus 2p. Remember to subtract again. So I indicate my square brackets there to show that I'm subtracting everything, please. 25 plus 2px minus 25 plus 2px will be 0. Then I'll have 4. Negative, negative will give me a positive 2 into 25 plus 2p. But remember, if I go back to the question, the question said my remainder is 78. So this is actually supposed to be equals to a 78 there. So to solve for p, given this last part, I will say this is 4 plus 50 plus 4p is equals to a 78. And then I have 4p is equals to a 26. If you do your mental maths there, not 26, rather 24. Uh, please forgive me on that one. This will give me 24, and then dividing by 4 both sides, I'll have p is equal to a 6. So you see, the 6 was already in my mind. Um, that's what a great mind does, and I believe you guys are also great minds. So it's one of the things you guys are thinking about there at home. Let's look at the second method of solving this question. I'm given x plus... Um, I'm given x minus 2 rather is equal to 0 as a factor. If I solve for x, I'll have my x as equal to 2. Now... If I have f of 2, this must give me 78 according to the question because the question said when the value or rather the function value f of x is equal to px squared plus 25 plus 4 is divided by that and the remainder is 78. So if I substitute the value of the factor which is 2 into the equation, I must get 78. So f of x, I, rem I know it's px squared plus 25 x plus 4, and then substituting that value there, I will have p into 2 all squared plus 25 into 2 plus 4 is equal to 78. And then if you solve this, I will be left with 4p plus 50 plus 4 is equal to a 78. And then this will then give me 
if you look at it again, it will then give me my P as equals to six. So that's it, guys. What you need to look at when you're doing this question is what exactly do they want us to do? Please remember to keep your eye on the goal. The goal is to find the value of P, not really to find the remainder because you are already given the remainder. So let's go back and have a look at the second question that we have here. The second question reads, uh, we must also use the factor and remainder theorem to find the value of P when we are given f of x as equals to. So remember I gave you two methods to solve this particular question. For me, I'll take the longer method. For you guys, you can always use the shorter method. Remember, either one of them is correct. Now looking at this one, I will say I am given that f of x is equals to that. I know that that is my factor and also this is my remainder. So using the long division method again, I have x plus 1 there, I have x squared minus 7x minus p, and then remainder is supposed to be negative 52. Looking at this, I take the leading term divided by that, it gives me my x, and then it gives x squared, remember you multiply there as well, minus, uh, plus x. Then I must subtract, subtracting, I'm having x squared minus x squared is a 0, negative 7x minus x will give me a negative 8x, then I drop my p. Negative 8x divided by x will then give me a negative 8 there. Multiplying by the factor again will be negative 8x minus 8. And then remember to subtract again going down. This will be a 0 there. And then minus p plus 8 will then be the remainder that I have with this question. But remember I said Keep your, goal, your eye on the goal. The goal is to find P and not the remainder. But we are told the remainder is supposed to be negative 52. So I am then going to have negative P is equal to negative 52. Um, not plus, but minus. Minus 8. And then this is equal to a negative 60. So this is negative 60 negative p, therefore my p is equal to positive 60. Now, guys, coming back to you, if you may see what I've done here, the little glitches about signs. Instead of writing a, plus, a minus, I wrote a plus. So that's to say you must always pay close attention to detail. And that's it for, from me today. Just have a look at the quick ad break that we have, and then we'll then come back with more questions.